On uh, 2014, uh, Roland decided to, to close many plants around the world and they decided to close also uh, Roland Europe. And uh, even if Roland Europe was profitable, so it was a, a decision and we could not do nothing to, to avoid. Uh, I spoke with uh, eight engineers and three musicians, and we decided not to lose completely all our knowledge, because uh, imagine 25 years of Roland, but also the year of Seal, there was a lot of uh, uh, heritage about uh, uh, designing and building musical instruments. So I tried to convince a group of people, why don't we start to make something by our own? And uh, we are now in, in, in my recording studio. We started in the studio, in the, in the, in the other room, in the, in the taking room, and we worked for six months by our own to develop an idea about the new sound generation. And uh, this was from April 2004 until uh, October. And when we get some nice result about new sound, a new way of making the sound generation, I uh, call uh, uh, Mr. Fabrizio Sorbi, that is the uh, CEO of Proel company, an Italian company. And I asked him, we have a new technology, we have something that already start to work. Are you interested to make something in the musical instrument? Immediately say yes. It was and is still a, 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 a big adventure because start with a new brand uh, for something made in Italy is uh, uh, only crazy people <laughs> could do it. And uh, we started the Dexibel adventure and uh, we develop uh, a full lineup of uh, digital pianos and uh, with a complete new technology. So Luigi, I think yeah. I'd love to hear about the Dexibel. How does the name come from? Okay, we decide to use a, a famous name that was decibel that is the uh, unit measure for for loudness eh? and uh, uh, then of course mr bell that was the the inventor about many many things related to to audio and uh, then we decide to to change the the c with hex uh, because we were doing something extraordinary and with very, very uh, extra large type of memory. So we decided to use the hex and then uh, we change the eye with a different color and we make the eye like handcrafted uh, because we wanted to underline that uh, we made product uh, uh, of course, with digital technology, but with a lot of uh, handcraft. Mm. So it, it, it starts Dexibel, Dexibel name. And uh, the technology behind Dexibel is, uh, is really amazing. Because uh, imagine we, we started from, from zero. Of course, we had all the knowledge that we uh, learned in so many years. So. Uh, is not a new company because we have a lot of heritage, but we decide to completely change the way of uh, making a sound generation. So we started think something unique, of course, because otherwise nobody turn, turn their attention to, to a new company. And we made the uh, sound generation not based on uh, a single chip that is normally what many other big companies are doing, but we develop uh, 
a very fast uh, quad-core CPU. And with this CPU, we were able to run many, many uh, things uh, like uh, unlimited node polyphony or like uh, reaching 24 lin bit linear. Uh, so we changed a little bit what it was the, the game uh, on digital piano about the very big company like uh, Roland, Yama, Casio and Kawai. What was the first product? We, we come out simultaneously with six products. This was uh, really amazing because we uh, develop in three different segments. The home uh, that takes the name of H, like home, then the portable with P and the stage with S. For each one of these uh, segments, we realize two products, so H7 and H3, then the portable, the P7 and P3, and the stage, the S7 and S3. All these products share the same technology, so this is also unusual, because even the smallest instrument has the same high quality of the biggest one. So the difference in our product are only different keyboard, different amplification, different cabinet, but same high, high level uh, uh, quality. So what do you call the technology? Uh, the name of our sound generation in terms of hardware and software was T2L, True to Life. And uh, the nice things is that we could achieve to work uh, together between between uh, sampling and modeling technology. So for this, the first time we could let the system interact between these two technology. So we have the benefit of the nice sound sampled, but we have also the freedom of uh, modeling the sound so we can modify the sound when the player is performing. That's why uh, we say that the instrument is alive, because when the performer plays legato, plays staccato, or use the damper pedal, the sound is not always the same in the acoustic instrument. We could achieve the same thing, so we didn't record just a, a fixed sound, but because of the technology that makes also modeling, the sound change while you are playing in, in a very nice way. So the sound is alive. Alive in Italian means vivo. That's why we name all our lineup vivo. So vivo piano uh, means uh, they are alive uh, under the, the performance of the player. And what was the initial response that people had to the products? Uh, in the beginning, they were uh, interested, but a little bit suspicious because uh, who are you, where are you from, uh, an Italian company, uh, uh, do you have enough technology? Uh, but then, uh, if we could achieve to play the instrument, to let some musician try the instrument, they get immediately in love. And uh, for me, I still remember one, one thing that was a dream. The first NAM show that we did uh, in 2016, uh, Stevie Wonder came through our booth and he wanted to try. Uh, you can imagine, I was uh, kind of shocked. And uh, I personally explained to, to Stevie uh, the technology behind, uh, I show to him some sound, it, it starts playing some sound and he fall in love with the instrument. He decide, uh, because I explain, we are a startup, we are very young, we are 12 people, so he said, I do not want to be endorser, I want to buy the instrument for me. So he bought one instrument, he took home and uh, 
was the first day of Nam Sho. The second day, I think 20 or 30 very important musicians came because Mr. Stevie Wonder called all, all of them. So Victoria Theodore, uh, uh, Alessandroni, Alex Alessandroni. So we had on the second day and the third day of the Nam Show so many important musicians that I was really shocked. And uh, it starts a kind of word by mouth between musicians. And uh, the incredible things is that we started from the bottom, we started from the end user. So it was quite impossible to reach a retailer, to reach store, because they don't believe in us. And uh, was the musician and still today are the musician that go to the shop and ask for Dexibel. So this kind of, uh, of trend helped us very, very much. And of course, this was the first NAM show that we did uh, 2017 and we did also this year. And now the, the, the reaction of people, reaction of uh, dealer are much, much different. Now, let me say we are out of the noise level. So in the beginning, we were inside the area where uh, many, many new companies are doing new things, but uh, uh, you, you have not the trust of, of, the, of the big company, big distributor. Now we are out of this noise level and uh, day by day, we are increasing the sales, we are increasing the brand awareness and 2017, on May, we started distribution in US. And now we have uh, one person that uh, opened uh, Proel North America, whose name is uh, Antonio Ferranti. And uh, thanks to him, we are developing a very, very nice market business in, uh, in US. And it's still less than one year eh? because he started uh, June 2017. Very interesting. That's really cool. What a fascinating story. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, can you please tell us the, the engineers? Uh, have they always been the same here or is it already changing? No, no, no. We started with the same engineer that were in Roland Europe. Of course, part of them mm. because uh, when we decide, we select a group of, of person and we ask them if they want to make their own investment in terms of time. So we worked for quite uh, six months, seven months without salary. And then was just an hope to realize something. And then time by time, uh, we, we grow up a little bit. Then Mr. Sorby, as I said, the CEO of Proel, decided to start with this kind of uh, uh, new business and he purchased all the plant of Roland Europe. So now we are still in the same building uh, where I was when uh, I worked for Roland and when I was when I worked for CL. So for me, it's uh, probably more than... Uh, I, I was 18 years old, now I am 57, so quite 40 years. <laughs> oh, fantastic, that's really neat. We have, uh, in, in the current Dexibel organization, of course we are very, very small, but uh, first of all we have musician. This is something that uh, I always try to let management understand that in a musical instrument company musicians are a must. So in CL we had the musician group, in Roland I convinced Mr. Kageashi to have a musician group and now in Dexibel we have a musician group. So from musical section we have uh, Roberto Lanciotti that is a great piano player and he cooperate with me since Roland. We have made many, many pattern and demo song together. And we have Marco Di Paolo, that is another great musician. He studied also at Berkeley in the US. Then we have uh, a software engineer. And uh, one of these engineers is a genius, is the, the one that developed 
all the software or the real-time operating system for the Dexibel sound generator and the name is Andrea Celani and then uh, we have uh, uh, Matteo De Luca is another uh, software engineer so two musician two software engineer then we have one mechanical engineer whose name is Daniele Verdecchia so all the project, all the mechanical designs came from one person inside this company. Then we have uh, an hardware engineer, his name is Diego Ferraiuolo, and uh, a PCB, printed circuit board, board design, uh, whose name is... Uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> okay, whose name is uh, Enzo Bargoni. Then we have a person that coordinate all the R&D, and the name is Marrico Sbaffoni. Then we have two sound engineers. So this is another important fact, because we have engineers that realize uh, the software, the hardware, the, 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 the cabinet. We have musicians that think about uh, uh, the total instrument, the function and the sound. But we have sound engineers that realize all the waves, all the loops, all the patches. And we have two engineers for that. One is Roberto Gaetani, and the other one is uh, Guido Gennari. And uh, this team is, is uh, I, I mean, we are friends, and uh, also very nice atmosphere uh, at the job. As you can imagine, we use a lot my studio. So everything started from here, but every time we have to record, a new instrument, I have the, the, the possibility to record in my studio, also to find some kind of uh, 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 unique type of way of uh, recording the sound, so we develop also on the sound recording something unique. That's fantastic. Tell me how the studio got started. Yes, this was on uh, many years ago, probably 1982, yes, because as a musician, uh, as I said in the beginning, I worked for a label, recording company that realizes movie, soundtrack, so I need to have something for myself to record and to prepare. So it borns the first studio that was smaller than this one, but then, year by year, I decided to make music production uh, and to work with the band. Uh, so, I keep both type of job. The recording studio, where of course I have a sound engineer that follows all the recordings, but also the, the CL, the Roland, and then the, the Dexibel. Uh, now, the studio is mostly used for uh, renting to realize uh, a record for band, for singer, but also to realize the sampling section for, for Dexibel. But even in Roland time, here we realize all the sound for the Via Accordion. We realize many of the sound for the uh, arranger keyboard. So the, the drums, the bass, all the, all the sound uh, set up, all the sound set. That's really cool. How neat. How long in this location? Uh, here is already 20 years, wow. 20 years. And what was the first board? Tell me how that progressed, the control board. Uh, you mean the recording? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the first one was a, a Fostex 8-channel tape recorder. Uh -huh. Then I moved to the Fostex 16-channel tape recorder, and this was the analog type. Then when Roland realized the DM80, that was the first digital recorder by 8-track, I start with uh, two DM80, so I moved to digital, then reaching four DM8 up to 32 channel, and then finally uh, I moved now to uh, computer. I'm using uh, a Mac with uh, uh, Logic uh, Audio but I still keep something vintage on my studio. So 
before entering on the digital to analog, analog to digital conversion, I use strictly uh, many, many tube preamp. So I'm using a lot of vintage preamp with uh, tube, with valve, to have much more warm sound and uh, uh, it create a very good uh, uh, atmosphere of sound. I would like to hear your uh, impression of the Fostex products because I was so very proud to interview uh, Yoshi Abisan. <laughs> Yes. And I would love to hear what you think of his product. Yes, w w was great. Was great because uh, uh, he keep the multi-track recording to affordable price and to kind of a home studio. But even at that time, I I did a, a, a very crazy usage because I I was I am a keyboard player. Then I had the need to make much more than eight track. So at that time I use uh, one track for sync and I use a lean drum machine that uh, send usually a kind of sync code. So I record this sync code on one track that synchronized the lean machine. Then the lean machine was connected to MIDI to a sequencer. So usually I use seven track on the tape, uh, just for voice, for guitar, uh, for something that was uh, acoustically recorded, but synchronized with Lean for drums, that synchronized MIDI for all the keyboard. So finally, even at that time, I mixed down something with 32, 40, 40 different tracks. That's crazy. Yeah. And this, uh, I keep the same type of working with, with the 16 track, of course, increasing the number of, uh, of audio recording. Yeah. <laughs> That's very cool. That's really neat. Is there anything else that you wanted to talk about? I know you prepared some notes and so on. Is there anything that we missed to talk about? No, probably we, <laughs> we, we cover everything. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, probably if you like, I say something about uh, the decibel, the, the, the next idea that are coming. Yeah, uh, as, a, as a Decibel, we are, of course, designing many, many instruments. Already we, this year we will introduce three new instruments, uh, but we are already designing the 2019 and even the 2020 technology. And uh, as I said, we have developed uh, a unique sound generation board and uh, we already are thinking f to the next sound generation board that will give uh, us tremendous power to manage so many DSP in real time, so many oscillator. So at this moment the Decibel lineup is a digital piano and digital organ because we also made uh, a vintage organ with uh, motorized drawbar to emulate the, the Hammond, but also the transistor organ type. And we have also a pipe organ, so a kind of uh, keyboard that simulate all the type of pipe, uh, including orchestral sound. But we are thinking also to other instruments. So our technology could allow us to make everything, to make drums, to make accordion, we are now have to focus to understand uh, which one is the next step for Dexibel. Well said. Would it be okay to ask you um, your impression of Farfisa, the instrument yes. and company? Yes, yes. Uh, I, I was very young. I was a teenager. For me, it was uh, uh, incredible because uh, I visit Farfisa because I own uh, several electronic accordion of Farfisa, the, the Cordovox, uh, the Synth Accordion, and at that time was uh, a huge company. Hundred and hundred people working there. And uh, probably I, I start my feeling on designing musical instrument uh, visiting Farfisa. 
Uh, so it, it was a great company and uh, finally all the history all, all the history that I told you about start from Farfisa because uh, from Mr. Lucarelli that uh, uh, realized the seal then seal became Roland Roland became Dexibel so finally everything starts from Farfisa <laughs> where was the company located is uh, near Ancona so 60 kilometers from, from here, north. Gotcha. Very neat. That's very cool. Very important history. Thank you. Thank you.